This video is brought to you by Dr. Kristen R. Bromley's Guitar Method Book Series and Online Music Academy. Dr. Kristen Bromley, welcome to my online academy. It's so great to have you joining me here in these online lessons. This is lesson 13 in this series that is all about jazz guitar. I love jazz guitar, as you know, and I'm so thrilled to be bringing this course to you. In this lesson, we're going to learn a new technique, a new piece of improv idea, so to speak, that we can add into our improvisation. So, so far we've worked with chord tones over the major sixth and dominant seventh chords. In the last couple lessons we added in using the major second or major ninth as part of that which actually creates for the major sixth chord a major pentatonic scale and for the dominant seventh it creates a dominant seventh pentatonic scale so we learned about that in the last couple lessons in this lesson we're going to add in this flatted third resolving to the third for the most part with our major sixth chords and this is such an important sound in the jazz language. So let's just go ahead and get started with it. Super fun. I love this one. Up here on the board, I have the arpeggio pattern written out. So if you need a reference, hopefully you've uh, kind of got it down by now with as much work as we've done on it. But I have it up here so that we can reference where these new notes are. I did put the second which second or major ninth that we learned about in the last couple lessons, I have that here as well, so you can just kind of see where it is for reference as well. But we're talking about the flatted third, adding this flatted third here. So we have a third of our scale in this low sixth string here, and we get a flatted third right below it. And then with our third on the higher octave, we have the flatted third there with the square around it just below it. Same thing shown over here on the fifth string form. So let's take a look and apply it here on the fretboard a little bit. So I got my middle finger, I'm going to play in the key of C, so I got my middle finger on the 8th fret of the 6th string for us, and we would play, let's just look at the lower octave first. So we would play normally our major 6th arpeggio just like so, or we could play that major pentatonic that we learned about in the last couple lessons, or two lessons ago for the major 6th chord. Now we've got this flat in third. So if I go the root, flat 3, 3, five, six, root, again. So. You might recognize that with a little slide in. That's sort of an old boogie kind of bass line. Now if you, if you go root two, flat three, three, five, six, and then up to that root, normally you would come down Chromatically, I didn't do it there, but if you were to do that, you'll get what some people call like a blues two scale or major blues scale. So if you've learned like the blues scale, for example, this is a major blues scale. We start getting into a lot of scales. And in my theory and technique book, the new version, especially that's going to be coming out here in a few months, a second edition has got so much stuff in it. it goes over scales galore. <laughs> there are so so different so many different scales that we can use for improvisation and creating melodies and harmonies and so on. But this is a major blue scale if you just play it as a scale. And you have that second step in there as well, just FYI. But we're taking that flat at third and we're going to be playing it most of the time where we're going from the flat at third up to the third. So you can kind of hear that with the arpeggio. It creates a blues aspect, a bluesy aspect to the language. So that's that one on the sixth string. Then you want to look at that octave on the fifth string. And if I go to C, I've got my middle finger there at the third fret, and I can do the same sort of thing. Or I can play that major blue scale, adding in that second step. that on both octaves. Now we're going to spend most of our time on the higher octave as we know. So I'm going to go ahead and sort of play around up there and give us some ideas to work with. So we've got our ring finger here that can start on that higher root. So back to C with the lower root on the sixth string. Then you're going to go two frets and two, two strings higher. You'll find the, the next higher root and we're going to work from there. So we have our arpeggio, major sixth arpeggio that we're really familiar with 
on those higher strings hopefully by now. And as we're going, we've got this flatted third that it can then go to the third. So. You just want to get used to that sound. And if we were to use all the notes on the top four strings, we can throw that low sixth in. And I'm not using the two at the moment. We'll look at that here later, how we can play with that, that second in there as well. But just want to get comfortable with that. Now we want to be able to do the same sort of thing with the fifth string form, which I have over here on the right. If I go back to the key of C with the fifth string form, my middle finger is at the third fret on that fifth string, and my ring finger now, if I go up to that higher octave, I got my ring finger at the fifth fret on the third string. And I can play that higher octave arpeggio, only we don't go all the way up to the root, so I got the sixth there. And if we do the same sort of sound, we have that flatted third that's going to resolve to the third. I just add a little extra hitting of the C there to sort of take up the time that's missing from playing that root on top. So you just want to get comfortable with that movement. Now once we have that movement down, you could work through that with each of these forms chromatically. We've done that sort of thing in previous lessons. I'm just going to take us through here around the circle of force because as we work on improvising today, we're going to work through all 12 keys improvising over a backing track like we have in the past using this new idea around the, the circle of force. So we learned this in all the keys right here in the area that we would use these particular arpeggio forms in. So if we go back to C then, Back up where our index would be at the 8th fret, or, or the root is at the 8th fret of the 6th string. We go to that higher root, the 10th fret, on that 4th string, and we have... So we're going to play that one like that, then we move up to F. We're just going to add an extra hit of the root to compensate for not having the root on top. And then we go down to B flat. So let's do that, let's work through that together. So we're going to go red... C M starting with C. Now F. Now we'll do B flat. Now E flat. A flat. to G flat. And then we're down to B. And E. And we've got A. Then we got D. We're going to be down to G. to see. Just like so. And now we can improvise throwing that sort of idea in. As we're doing it, you can try and force yourself anytime you're going to play the third to actually throw in that flat at third to, to the third, whether we're going higher, uh, coming, coming, I should say, coming to the third from below or above, we can throw it in just like we were. Or... Either way, it sounds so great. Now, I've just been plucking them, but you can slide into it. You can hammer. So, we've got that in there, and it's super, super fun. Let's go ahead and play with that idea working around the circle of force with a backing track. Now, it's going to give us, like it often does, the and, four and in the snare drum, and then we'll be in the key of C. So, eight bars per chord. So, like normal, when we're working on these kinds of things.
super fun at least I hope it was as fun for you as it is for me now that backing track of course is available on the channel in the jazz jam along backing track playlist and down in the description below there's a link for that one if that felt a little fast I'm figuring at this point maybe that's an okay tempo since we've been working with these arpeggios for a while but you can also practice it at a slower tempo we did 121 beats per minute here but there is the backing track that we've used previously with major six chords where we did 101 beats per minute so that's there too if you want to practice over the top with that but lots of cool things that fit inside of this language charlie christian you'll hear that sort of thing in his playing and some of the other players even on other instruments in the early eras but that actually comes in we hear that sort of thing even in the bebop era and the eras that follow a lot of times approaching that third that natural major third by the flat at third super fun sound now you can practice that sort of thing a lot and get a lot of mileage out of it the blues tunes that we've worked on so far that sound entering that into those chords is going to really give us some more blues language to start getting in as we're improvising over blues changes and also the other tunes that we're going to be working on as we move forward now that we've got this up here I want to show one other aspect with this flat at third that we can do so we've worked with the major second before so we can actually approach the third from the second and I I kind of stayed a little bit away from throwing in that second but the second because we've worked on that is now fair game so on that higher string for example if I wanted to go two flat three three I can totally approach the third from the second to the flat at third and third and get a cool and throw that ninth in there so if we just play through this for a moment I'm going to stay on these top four strings, but off that six string one in the key of C, if I have my root, two, flat, three, three, five, six, root, and we can throw the two on top. And as we come down, we'll go three, flat, two, two, root. So we're really just playing that blue scale up here on top. So we can do the sound, the two to the flat, three to the three sounds really great inside of our licks and our ideas that we're playing. And can also play from three flat two to two and get some mileage as well when we're going down to that root. Kind of in that sort of a fashion, so. That kind of idea so if we look at that up on the fifth string as well you've got that option there where you can go two sharp two or flat three same same uh, pitch three five six one 
just like that. To get used to playing that in there with these, we'll just play through that major blues scale, that piece of it. So this low sixth string will go one and two and three. We won't worry about hitting the high root this time. So just like that, and then on to the next one, so the key of F. Let's take that around the circle of force just to kind of get used to it, and then we'll improvise with that. I'll show you some ideas. You can play right along with me again. So we go ready and up to F. B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat. And we got G flat, B. Just like that. Okay, so now let's go ahead and improvise again, trying to get some of those ideas in there as well. And with this low six string form, I'm not afraid to throw that ninth in on top if I want to, want to as well. So, okay, we'll play through this backing track again. I'll give you some ideas you can play right along with me. Love this improv stuff. Flat. 
Okay, super, super fun. I hope you've enjoyed that. Now you can keep working on it. There's backing tracks again on the Jazz Jam Along tracks. You can play right along with those using the major six blues in both B flat and F will work great with what we've just added. So great things that can be played there with the tunes that we've already learned. And we'll be using these, of course, with tunes that we learn in the future. And then there's the backing tracks that go right around the circle of force like we've been working on this. So hopefully helpful. The technique, we've shown you how to use it a little bit, how to work on it a little bit, and then improvise with it, both with that flatted third, just going up to that third, and then between that two and three. Those things are right inside the jazz language both the early era, but we also use these things a little bit as we move it into bebop, and then we use bebop language in anything that comes post bebop. It's just, that's our, that's our jazz language. So lots of great things that we're getting in, and the more things that we get in, the more exciting I think it gets. So hope you're having fun with this. In the next lesson, we're gonna work on these things with the dominant seventh chords, so that's gonna be awesome. These lessons are gonna come out on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays now. So every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, we'll have another jazz lesson coming out as part of the series and we'll just keep them coming. So have fun, take care, and we'll see you again. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. For more in-depth lessons and to progress through a free guitar course, check out my Guitar 101 series on YouTube and my Guitar Method books, which all come with access to hours of in-depth video lessons. You can find more information about me and my products at kristenbromley.com. Take care. Thank you.